Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com, setting the record straight about climate. In my previous video, I discussed extreme heat wave fraud from the Union of Concerned Scientists. In this video, I extend and quantify that analysis. I've developed some new graphing tools which allow me to simultaneously analyze every single day since 1895. More about that later, but this video shows the first results from those new tools. It's been hot the last few days in the Midwest, and the press is making a field day of it. Heatwave 2019, massive heatwave blamed for at least six deaths. Heatwave to expand from Plains Midwest to east this week. Look at all that hot pink. Records fall as last day of heatwave bakes Midwest. Dangerous heatwave scorches millions in parts of the U.S., at least one dead. And here's the really good stuff. National Geographic. Off the charts heat to affect millions in U.S. in coming decades. Senior climate scientist at Union of Concerned Scientists says Midwest will begin to experience days that are so hot they're off the charts. And the same story from the Cleveland scene. Unaddressed climate change will skyrocket number of days with extreme heat. So there it is. Unless you give up your car, your meat, your lifestyle, your income, your vacations, everything else we depend on fossil fuels for, you're going to burn up. And it's right there. Concerned scientists say so. Who could argue with concerned scientists? After all, they're scientists and they're concerned. Now let's look and see if there's any validity to these claims by National Geographic and the Union of Concerned Scientists. Yesterday was the hottest day of the year in the Midwest. The peak temperature was 97 degrees and the average maximum temperature was 91.7 degrees. Compare this with July 14th, 1936, which was the hottest day on record in the Midwest. The average afternoon temperature that day in 1936 was 106 degrees, which was almost 15 degrees hotter than this year's hottest day. Those temperatures in 1936 were genuine off-the-charts heat, and carbon dioxide levels were very low at the time, only about 310 parts per million. So what National Geographic and Union of Concerned Scientists are trying to tell us is that we need to lower CO2 levels to avoid the sort of heat which we had when we had lower CO2 levels. It makes absolutely no sense. This graph plots the average temperature for every single July day in the Midwest since 1895. It's sorted from coolest to hottest. The coolest July day since 1895 in the Midwest was about 70 degrees, and the hottest was 106 degrees on July 14, 1936, which we've already discussed. This year's hottest day in the Midwest was nothing extraordinary at all. In fact, it was not much above the median temperature for all July days since 1895. This is a histogram once again for all July days in the Midwest since 1895. The center of the histogram is right around 85 degrees, and this year's hottest day was about 91.6 degrees. Actually pretty amazingly cool for a hottest day of the year. This next graph shows every single July day since 1895 in the Midwest, except this time instead of showing the average temperature, it shows the peak temperature on each day. This graph is even more remarkable because it shows that the hottest day in 2019 was not much above the average July day for every single day since 1895. This year's heat wave was completely unremarkable, not much above the average July day in the Midwest. And this is the histogram for the peak temperature on all July days in the Midwest since 1895. You can see that this year's peak temperature of 97 degrees was very close to the median for all July days since 1895 in the Midwest. In other words, remarkably cool. I should mention too while we're looking at this histogram that these gaps are not real. It's some sort of artifact of rounding error. But that doesn't have any impact on the median, which is what we're looking at for this analysis. This graph shows the average July daily maximum temperature at all Midwest United States Historical Climatology Network stations since 1895. You can see that July afternoon temperatures have dropped several degrees in the Midwest since the 19th century. And they're way down since the 1930s. The only recent year which was hot was 2012. This year has been just about average since 1895. But with cool air moving into the Midwest for the rest of the month, it will probably drop quite a bit before the month is over. And this graph shows the percent of days above 90 degrees, 95 degrees, 100 degrees, 105 degrees, and 110 degrees for every year since 1895. 
You can see that July used to be much hotter in the Midwest prior to 1940, and that recent years have been among the coolest on record. Now let's look at the New York Times from July 1936 to see what a real heat wave looks like. New York Times, Saturday, July 11th, 1936. 30 die here in New York City in 100 degree heat. Western crops cut 40%. 127 people felled in city area. Civic and commercial activities crippled on third day of heat wave. 10 drownings reported. Toll and Nation put at 421 dead. 75 WPA women felled by heat. Indiana Highway pavement buckled by the heat. That's pretty amazing. And then a list of the deaths and prostrations in New York City. A huge list. So we've looked at the actual historical data now, which shows that heat has declined sharply in the Midwest since the 1930s and since 1895. And what National Geographic and the Union of Concerned Scientists are claiming has no scientific basis whatsoever, as CO2 has increased the amount of hot days has declined sharply in the Midwest and in the rest of the United States. There is no scientific basis to their claims. As CO2 has increased, the amount of heat has decreased. The Union of Concerned Scientists is not doing science, they're committing fraud. Obviously they have some other agenda which has nothing to do with science. This massive fraud needs to be stopped before they do some real damage. Visit Toto on the web at realclimatescience.com. He's been pulling back the curtain on junk science and propaganda for a long time.